Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Chill Town Hoops. I'm your host, Jermaine. The youngsters call me OG. My friends call me J-Dub. Let's get to it. You know, we get wrapped up a lot in familiarity. You know, we, 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 we're, we like things that are familiar. Things that we're used to seeing. Things that they, it just makes sense to us. So, when you see things that are familiar, you get comfortable with them. And... We're getting used to them. You just expect it to always be that way. Because that's just, it's, it, it's always been that way. So, when it becomes unfamiliar, then you start to question it. Like, hey, what's going on here? So, the same idea is going on with James Harden. You know, James Harden has been the consummate scorer over the last eight, nine years. Well, and that's what's been familiar to us. That's what we used to seeing with him in the playoffs. Now, not just in the playoffs, in the regular season in particular, but then in the playoffs. But what also happens is, is when the playoffs start, later on in the playoffs, he starts to slow down. Whether it's his production slows down or his body breaks down. One of those two happens to him. That's familiar. But then we see something that's unfamiliar, right? We see somebody that looks slower. I see somebody that doesn't look as sharp. I see somebody that he doesn't look like James Harden used to look. And now the question starts to come about, you know, are we seeing the beginning of the end of James Harden? Am I seeing the beginning of the end of James Harden? Well, I do. I feel like I am. I feel like I'm looking at a guy who he's in, he is in a shell of himself. He still has it, but he looks like a guy who used to be really, really good, and now he's just good. Not washed. Can still do a lot of the things that he used to do. Distribute the basketball. Great playmaker. Could still shoot the long ball, but. Can't do it like he used to do it. And it's obvious. I thought that Philly tried to speed the game up yesterday. And that didn't work. They tried to get Miami to play the way they wanted to play. Where James Harden gets in space. And he gets in transition. And he's stopping and popping from three. Well, Miami thwarted that. And the reason, the way they shut that down was their transition defense was incredible. And not only was their transition defense incredible, their ability to guard the three-point line. Six for 34 on the long ball from Philadelphia, including five for 22 from your starters. I thought, I thought Miami did a great job in guarding the long ball line. Closing out in transition, making those guys not even make tough shots, just take tough shots. And now, when you're taking tough shots like that, not only just taking tough like not only just taking tough shots like that, when you're taking tough shots all night, that just that that shrinks you offensively, because nothing's really going for you guys. So with that being said, I thought that Miami did a really good job defensively, in transition in particular, in handling the Philadelphia 76ers and creating turnovers, because a lot of Philadelphia's turnovers came in transition. A lot of their turnovers came in transition. We're talking about a team that had 14 turnovers last night. And Miami converted 22 points off of that. That's almost, that's almost all of your turnovers were converted into points. I thought Gabe Vincent did a good job defensively on James Harden. Picking him up full court. Making him change direction. Slowing down their offense when they got in the half court. James Harden is the key to this thing. Because Tobias Harris... Is going to get involved. That's just Tobias Harris's game. He's going to get involved now. He's not going to give you 27 or 28 a game. No. That's not what he's going to do. But he's going to get involved. And I thought he did a really good job of getting involved. Maxi is a, a is a guy who speeds up the game. Who tries to speed up the game. Because his game is, is pure athleticism. And speed. That's who Maxi is. Excuse me. But I thought that they did a good job in 
keeping him in front of him, particularly at the three-point line. He falls in love with the three. I mean, he shot six threes last night. He missed five of them. He bailed the defense out plenty of times doing that. Not once or twice. He bailed the defense out plenty of times doing that. They got 21 points from their bench. You know, George Nyang, who's, he's their first guy off their bench. He's the spark off their bench. He didn't give them anything last night because all he does is shoot the long ball. That's it. He didn't do anything else. Defensively, he didn't rebound. He didn't give them anything defensively. And he didn't give them anything offensively. 0 for 7 on the long ball. And when I'm coming in the game as a specialist, all right, well, I have to do my job. And if my job is to shoot the long ball, then I got to shoot the long ball. And if I'm not shooting the long ball and that's all I do, then I'm completely useless. I'm not giving us anything else whatsoever. Nothing. I mean, Philly got 71 points total from their starters. Total from their starters. Including James Harden went, James Harden took four shots in the second half. And I think the reason he took four shots in the second half, and a lot of us aren't really buying into it. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the people who, who I'm one of the people who is buying into it. I think James Harden is on the other side of James Harden's prime. People, I, I hear a lot of, I hear a lot of logic about why isn't James Harden shooting. I think it's a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's slowing down. James Harden doesn't have what he used to have. What he used to have in volume, he doesn't have that anymore. I can't remember James Harden being one of those guys who won't shoot the basketball. Let me talk about a guy who shot four shots last night in the second half, and we also talking about a guy whose game is predicated on getting to the stripe. That's his game, getting to the stripe. In the, in, in the eight years that he played in Houston, in the playoffs alone, in the playoffs alone, he shot 11 free throws a game on average. That means that he's creating a lot of contact. That means that he's going to the hole with reckless abandon. And that means that he was playing smarter offensively. He's down to, he's down to about seven free throws a game. Well, the game's being officiated a little bit differently now, so... That means that now I got to play through contact. And that's not his game. And Miami is a very physical team. Very much so. So they can withstand droughts. And the reason why they can withstand droughts because defensively they're so good. Miami wasn't very good last night. Not just oh, not just offensively. Not just defensive, not defensively. But they weren't very good at shooting the long ball. They were just as bad as Philadelphia. I mean, they were five. Their starters were five for twenty-two on the long ball, but because they guard so well, they can withstand droughts like that. And they have guys who, in the process of them getting droughts, can make big plays for them defensively to get them back in the game. Because that's how they end up getting themselves back in the game when they have offensive droughts. You know, they can get points off turnovers. They can they can speed the game up a little bit because what Philly tried to do was Philly tried to speed the game up to their pace and continue to play like that. Miami would not allow that. Mm -mm. Miami would not allow that. I thought that I thought that Bam played the exact game that he's used to playing: rim running, getting in the mid range, protecting the rim, rebounding. He's at his best. Not only is he at his best when he's doing that, he's at his best when they involve him. And Miami has that kind of offense where Miami has that kind of offense where they could get Bam involved early. And I think that they did that. I think that was a good thing for them. The problem was the rest of those guys. I mean, for some reason I watched Jimmy Butler fall in love with the three. I don't remember Jimmy Butler shooting four or five threes in a game. That's not his game. Jimmy is one of the Jimmy is 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 one of the dinosaurs in the game, like DeMar DeRozan and uh, Booker, where Jimmy sits in the mid range. That's his game, and his game is predicated on energy and defense. And I'm watching Jimmy shoot a bunch of long balls last night. I'm thinking to myself, "Wow, that's not Jimmy's game." And he does look like he's laboring. I think a big I think a bright spot for them last night, in addition to Gabe Vinson, who I think is going to continue to be big in this series, was P.J. Tucker. I said last offseason when I found out that
the Milwaukee Bucks let him walk out the door. I didn't have a problem with him leaving. Because I thought Bobby Portis would, 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 would take up the slack. But to let him walk out the front door to the Miami Heat? Nah. Uh -uh. I mean, we could lose him to Indiana. You could lose him to San Antonio. Right? You could lose him to the Clippers. He can't walk out the front door to South Beach. No, that can't happen. No. Losing Joel Embiid with this Philadelphia team is going to be a is it's just going to be a huge problem because their offense is predicated on him. That's 30 and 11 that's gone from your offense. And now that that's gone, they got to completely revamp their offense and run it through James Harden. And we know who James Harden is in the playoffs. We know who he is. We know what he's about. And Miami can make quick work of Philadelphia if this continues. They absolutely can make very quick work of them. And speaking of quick work, I thought that the Phoenix Suns, despite what you saw at the, the despite what you saw with the score, I thought that they handled Dallas exactly the way Dallas should be handled. Luca, if you're gonna go for 45 or 50, we'll eat that. The rest of you dudes aren't gonna do anything. The rest of you, the Jalen Brunson, you can't go off on us. Because Jalen Brunson, you're not going up against Mike Conley now. So the ability to get into the paint and and rough. Mike Conley up, you're not going to be able to do that with Chris Paul. No. Bullock shooting the long ball. Well, Phoenix guards the long ball a lot better than Utah does. So those shots that he was those shots that he was getting against Utah, those shots are going to be a lot tougher now. I thought even though even though Luca went off last night, I thought they did a good job of, of, of switching and putting bodies on him. And I thought one on one. I thought what they also did, what I thought was good, was one-on-one. -on -one. Making everybody else stand around and watch, which was really good. I thought that was, because when, when you have your other guys standing around and watching, what that means is that there's no continuity in the offense. There's no ball movement. There's no, there, people aren't moving, which means that Phoenix's defense was never off balance. Never. Now, in terms of Phoenix offensively, I think that they are the most complete team in the game. I'm a big Milwaukee guy, but in terms of a complete, uh, I think that Phoenix is the most complete team in the game. When they got their floor leader in Chris Paul, they are very difficult to beat. And the thing that I enjoy the most about them is when they get eight and involved early. When they get eight and involved early, that energizes their entire unit. I've been telling you guys this from the beginning. The big guy's energy is everybody else's energy. When he comes out and he's ready to go, that resonates through everybody. And when they get Aiton involved early, that just energizes their entire unit. They went to him early and often. I mean, he was four for six to start the game. And when they do that, they get going, they are, they are a very difficult team to beat. We're talking about a team that had, they got 91 points from their starters. 91. I could go down the list of their... Reserve guys, but their starters are what are, are, was what the difference was yesterday. Their starters were a huge difference in what they were doing yesterday. Making Jalen Brunson, forcing Jalen Brunson into different areas that he didn't want to go. Because like I said, he wants to he wants to rough Mike Conley up. He can't do that with Chris Paul. Mm -mm, he cannot do that with Chris Paul. He wants to go downhill. Well, he can't do that with Chris Paul. Because Chris Paul is going to keep a body on him and stay in front of him. And force him into tough shots or shots that he doesn't want to shoot. I'm not sure that this Dallas team... I'm, once again, understand that this is a field... Game one is a field out game. Game one is a game that you look at and go... Like, where, how far can we go? What are we looking at with these guys? And Dallas is going to make some adjustments. But when I look at Dallas... I think Phoenix can handle them in six games. I do. I think that that series could be over. I'm not, I'm not going to say quick work, no. But I think that, 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 I think that series could be over in six games. So, playoffs, baby. We are here. Absolutely. And loving every minute of it. So, we'll be back real soon. But until then, take it light. But take it.